Hi. Is, Hello? This, is, is Sandy there? No, she's not. Oh, okay. Well, why are you so grouchy for? I'm just asking. What? Why are you so grouchy about it? I just asked. You don't have to bite my head off. Who is this? Oh, uh, this is Dave. I live down the street. Yeah. And um, I was just calling about, um, you know, what, what you're doing last last weekend, you know, with the Halloween stuff. Yeah. Are, are you the guy... Are you Sandy's husband? What? Look, Dave, what, what's the purpose of your call? I don't like you calling me grouchy. I'm answering the phone. You want to know if she's here? I'm saying no. You're asking me a bunch of questions. I don't know who you are or what this is about or anything. Well, I'm getting ready to tell you. Please uh, tell me? Okay. Dave, Dave, down the street. So are you the Dave, one that was... <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Are you the one that was winking at my kid when, when you handed him candy? What? Dave, you must be an ass. Well, I'm not a weird pervert, at least, like you are. Uh, I'm not any pervert. I couldn't have been winking at anybody because I had on a freaking mask. Oh, they could see you winking through the mask, you pervert. No, nobody could see my eyes through the mask. It was shaded. Uh, oh. I wish I had caller ID, Dave, to uh, uh, know who you are. because I already told I, you who I am. Yeah, your name is Dave from down the street. I don't know any freaking Dave from down the street. Okay, Mr. Grouchy, settle down. There's two... There's two <laughs> Look, you can call me all the names you want. Do you sure you have the right Sandy? There's another Sandy about a half a block from here. Maybe her old man was winking at your kid. Well, you live at 201. I don't 201. any kids, Dave. You live at 201, right? No, I don't live at 201, Dave. So you're, you're My address is 499... Hey, shut the fuck so up. would you please so, tell me your last name, Dave, or are you afraid? Of oh, I'm not afraid of shit. My number's on your, uh, Huh? My number's on your caller ID. Just look. I don't have caller ID, Dave. That's why I'm asking idea? you your name and phone number. I do not have caller ID. Otherwise, I wouldn't know who you were. Do, do you wear the, the shaded mask so you can wink at kids and they won't know? <laughs> oh, boy. That's a good one, Dave. You got the address wrong, you got me wrong, but you're still going after it, huh? That's right. Cuz I, yeah, I know what who do I look like, Dave. You, I don't know you had a mask on, but I, I you know yeah, you I can lie about what your address is all you this, want. This is bullshit. Oh, you're bullshit, Mr. Grouchy. No, you're a you're a fucking idiot, Dave. No, I'm not. You're a cock-sucking fucking idiot. You take that back. Take it back. Huh? You take that Kiss back. my fucking ass, Dave. That's mean. Is that your real name? Oh, you don't have balls enough to tell me who you are, where you live. I told you I'm Dave. Bullshit. I live on... This some bullshit. You're probably getting off. You're probably jacking your little Peter right now. I'm an, and I'm imagining you winking at me while I do it. <laughs> Just like you wink no, at the I kids. I don't think so, Dave. Not really, Dave. Uh-huh. Come on, Dave. How What's you, your address? How, What's your name, big boy? How do you know what I'm uh, what I'm imagining while I do this? I live at 358. <laughs> Why you do what? I don't know, Dave. You're imagining things about me that never freaking happened. Why don't you have caller ID? Are you too poor? You are some kind of sick fucking pervert, Dave. That's what I believe. At least I'm not I winking at you're little kids. Off on all this. Not winking at the what kids when I get. What difference does it make to you? Whether I have caller ID or not. Well, I don't know. I just think it's weird business. that you're you're so poor it's you can't like afford it. This is a bullshit call, and you're a bullshit fucking person with no balls. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, you're a sick bastard, Dave. Have a good day. I love you. Boy is calling for a survey. A survey of his need. He says if I answer.
No, 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 no. Don't tell me what I can do and what I can't do, sir. I'm the president of the park. I can go any place I want to. I'm not smelling poop. Get it out of there. Get it out of there. Thank you, Stephen Yuka, for that intro song. Hey, everyone, you're listening to The Snowplow Show. It's November 9th, 2018, and this is episode 509. Who are the sponsors today, Rachel? Give me one second. I'm just finishing up a drink. Damn it, Rachel. I told you to be ready on your cue. Come on. What are you doing? Very unprofessional. Hello? Hey, Rachel. Okay, sorry about that. It's okay. Okay, I'm ready. So am I. I've been waiting. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, the sponsors for The Snowplow Show are... Jason B, Matt Z, King Richard, Todd L, and Stephen Mags. I mean, Megs B. Megs B. Okay. Great. Okay. Thanks, Rachel. He did a great job. Okay, Roy. Thank uh, you so much. I hope you have a great day. You too. Snowplow show away. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. The sponsors of today's show are Jason B, King Richard, Matt Z, Stephen Megs B, and Todd L. Thank you for supporting the show, and if you'd like to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash phone losers. Also, thanks to the new supporters who have signed up recently, such as Squeegee and Porter and Alexa Singh. Be quiet, Alexa. Didn't I already do Alexa Singh? I think I did. And uh, Michael T, Travis Husky, Ben W, and Hugh Gidiot. Those are all people who have signed up on the Patreon recently. Thanks, everyone, for supporting the show. Your support's appreciated. We have a few announcements today. Announcement number one, the PLA meetup in Northern California is canceled. No, just kidding. It's still happening. It's probably canceled for me, but it's happening for everyone else. So I will have a link in the show notes for the event page on Facebook. If you would like to go to Northern California uh, this coming March 2019, and a lot of people are going to be there. Laugh Track Matt's going to be there. Zach's. I think I saw that Dwight is preparing a flight, so I'm pretty sure Dwight's going to make it out there. Lots of listeners to all of our shows. I know Carlito wants to make it. I don't think I've heard anything confirmed from him yet. And I'm not sure about JAG TV. Really, I'm not sure about anyone yet, including myself. I'm going to try my best to make it. I don't know if I'll be able to. We just kind of have to wait and see. I think Nick Caesar said he's going to make it. Didn't you, Nick Caesar? I can't remember. Or maybe that's just hopeful thinking because I want to meet Nick Caesar. There's a lot of people in California that love the PLA and do things for the show. I think Don Fickles is down there somewhere. Don Fickles, you should come up to the meetup. If I'm not mistaken, I think the meetup's going to be in San Jose, California. And I'm too lazy to look up the exact date right now, but I will have a link in the show notes if you want to go to that. People in the PLA Facebook group, they are trying to put together a archive of XYZ's prank call shows. As most of you know, the XYZ show ended earlier this year, just a few months ago. He did that show for four years. I was a pretty heavy listener for at least the last two years, maybe three He did some really fun stuff, but his show is gone. His archives are gone. I don't even know how to get in touch with him anymore. He doesn't seem to be on Skype anymore, but uh, the people in the PLA group, I'm going to link to a thread about the XYZ show. We're trying to pool all of our resources together and put together an archive of his old shows because we miss his old show. I would like to listen to old episodes every once in a while. So if you have old episodes of the XYZ show, please go to this thread that I'm linking to in the show notes and post your episodes and we're all going to download them. We're all going to share them. It's like a big convoluted manual torrent thing we're doing here. Somebody emailed me some of the episodes and then somebody put up a uh, mega file share whatever archive which I downloaded. Someone else says they're going to put some more up and XYZ if you're out there maybe you can contribute a couple episodes. 
That'd be cool. The good news is that XYZ lives on in the Calls of Mass Confusion videos that we recorded last year. GAD has been releasing an episode every single day for the past, I don't know, couple weeks, I guess. Looks like he posted one just two hours ago. I'm in that one. An apartment dig site. I don't even remember what that one's about. And then some kind of Dungeons and Dragons one was out yesterday. That one has XYZ in it. Laugh Track Matt's in the one from today. The one two days ago has Horsey Cat in it. There's a Planet Fitness one that has me, XYZ, Dwight, and Giad in it. Here's one with just Carlito doing a reference check on someone. Those are always fun. That's from four days ago. So everybody needs to watch those videos. You can find them by going to youtube.com slash Jesus in a Dump Truck. It's a very blasphemous YouTube name. I'm very offended by it since I'm a Christian, but youtube.com slash Jesus in a Dump Truck. He's going to be releasing an episode every single day until Thanksgiving, which just happens to fall on the same day as Thanksgiving this year. And that's the day we're going to do a full 24 hours of live prank phone calls, me and all of the other prank call hosts, where Giad's going to be doing a three hour long show. No idea what he's going to do in it. I never know until the last minute, but I'm sure it's going to be fun. Let's get started with today's show. Here is a song by Henrik. People pop up, up, people pop, people, people pop up, people pop in my front yard. Yes, yes, yes. Horrible. Yes, yes, yes. You told me Jesus Christ is your immediate supervisor. Yes, yes. Horrible. Yes, yes, yes. Horrible. Yes, yes, yes. I cannot. Yes, yes, yes. I cannot. Yes, yes, yes. I accept people pop up, pop up. I accept people pop up, pop up. Here is a prank submission from an anonymous person. He wants me to call this Lyft driver, whose name is Lawrence. He's a Caucasian male in his 50s, very easy to offend. He's a vegetarian because he's a Hare Krishna follower. His religious name is Avatar. He has a son in high school named... Why are you giving me his kid's name? His wife's from India. I'm not sure what to suggest, but it won't take much to make him angry. Okay, I'm going to do something that is very simple and will either work or it'll just make him hang up on me. He subleases an extra bedroom in his two-bedroom apartment and don't allow meat to be cooked because he doesn't like the smell. Hey, I think that's illegal, isn't it? Doesn't that violate religious rights or something? Can't tell people they can't cook meat. Hello. Hello, Lawrence. Yeah, who is this? Uh, hi, this is Mr. Gerbel. I'm with the uh, corporate office with Lyft. Oh, yeah. Hi, how are you? Hello, pretty good. Um, I just needed to let you know We've had several complaints that you've been being a motherfucker, and you're not allowed to what? do that with Lyft. What are you talking about? Uh, we have a very strict no motherfucker policy, and we've gotten. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, well, we've gotten several complaints that you have been, specifically you, you've been being a motherfucker. I don't know what you're talking about, sir. Being a motherfucker, you can't be a motherfucker while you're a driver for Lyft. So please. I don't know what what are you talking about. I I keep telling you. Like, why don't you understand what I'm telling you? Yeah. You, well, how come you have a main number? What are you What are you speaking? I got a four point nine nine rating, sir. Oh, correct. Yeah, you have a very high rating. You're a very good driver, but unfortunately, we've been told that you keep being a motherfucker. So you just need to stop. What's that mean? It just means you need to stop being a motherfucker. We have a strict no motherfucker what? policy. What does that mean, sir? It it means you need to stop being a motherfucker. That's all. It's as simple what? as that. But what does that? I don't know what you mean by that. I I mean you're being a motherfucker. Just stop being a. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? I don't know how I can make it any more clear. You've been being a motherfucker, and you just just please stop, okay? I don't know what you're talking about, you, man. You shouldn't be you shouldn't be a motherfucker to people. <laughs> Boy, I, I tell you, I don't know where you're coming from, man. Uh, I'm from the corporate office with Lyft. I, I'm just addressing well, a, an issue we have with you that you have been being a motherfucker. I don't know what like, you're talking about, like man. Even, even when you're off the clock and you're doing other things, you can't be being a motherfucker even then. I'm um, what doing other things? No, no. I mean, even when you're not being a driver for Lyft, you know, it's a, it's a yeah. The company image. You can't be a motherfucker anywhere. You just need to stop. Hey, listen, sir. I I don't eat meat. 
I don't. I haven't had sex in 25 years, man. I. What? This has nothing to do with sex. I'm saying you shouldn't be a mother I, I don't know what you mean. I, I don't fuck anybody's mother. E eating meat? What are you talking about eating meat? I don't eat meat. I'm a vegetarian, sir. Well, that's fine. Like, good for you. And I'm not, I don't fuck anybody's mother. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, sir, there's no reason to be obscene. Well, you're the one that's calling me a motherfucker. What is this coming from? List? Liz corporate office calling me a motherfucker? Yeah, what just, is this? I'm just saying that you're being a motherfucker and you need to stop being a motherfucker. To who? To, who? to lots of people. Just stop being such a motherfucker. Now, I've not, I'm sorry. I don't know what you're talking about, man. I'm talking about you being a motherfucker. Look, just th there's no reason to argue about it. What, you, what is your name, sir? Uh, this is Roy Gerbel. You're not in trouble or anything. I'm just saying stop being a motherfucker. I, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea. Yeah, you've said that about a hundred times now, and I keep telling you. Yeah, and I'm going to keep telling you that. Clear as day. I got a good rating, and I treat people really nice. I Everybody. know that. I know that. You've got a great rating. You're a great driver. You just keep being a motherfucker. That's, I don't understand what you mean by that. Well, look it up on the internet or something. You know, like, I, I'm, I'm sure you know what it means. Come on. It, it's common sense. No, I don't. Just, I don't know what you mean just, at all. Just stop being I a have motherfucker. I no idea. You're being such a motherfucker. It has nothing to do with eating meat. I don't know why you'd say that. Just, just quit, quit being such a motherfucker, okay? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Make a left right here. Hey, you tell those people yeah, in the background. Yeah. Can you tell those people to shut the fuck up? You shut the fuck up, motherfucker. Hey, look, they're, hey, my, pa mother. they're my passengers. They're my Lyft passengers, well, sir. I'm it's with the corporate office, so you, you tell them to shut the fuck up. You shut the fuck up. We go to corporate office on your ass. That doesn't make any sense, shut sir. Up. Hey, you guys. Thanks for the ride, man. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. Yeah, you guys are great, don't man. Don't hey, head. don't forget your stuff in the trunk, all right? Yeah. Okay. Hey, why don't you go help them yeah, with their okay. stuff out of the trunk? Don't be a motherfucker. They want, he wants me to help you get the stuff out of the trunk. And also tell them, they to, they don't. Also tell them to shut the fuck up. <laughs> I've never heard such sweet words in my life. I know, yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand I this. Yeah, there's, there's something going on. Hey, there, yeah. hey, hey, you customer, shut the fuck up. Now, a corporate guy would never say that. D did he hear that? Did he hear what I just said? Is I believe that you're pulling my leg. Yeah, yeah, I'm just a prank caller. I'm not with Lyft. I'm just, I'm just messing around, that's all. I don't even think you're a okay. motherfucker. I think you're a nice guy. Yeah. Yep, yep, that's all. I was just kidding around. I was just joshing with you. Yeah. That, that's, that's all. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, you're not a motherfucker. You're a nice person. Yeah, that's a uh, very strange phone call, boy, I tell you, to say yeah. the least. I know. I, I, I make them as strange as possible. Hey, are you going to pick up more people here in a minute? Like, can I talk to them, too? Uh, well, I don't have anybody with me right now. Ah, well, are you going to pick anyone up, or you just have to wait around? Uh, where am I waiting? I don't what know. for? No, no, I'm, I'm just saying, do you just have to wait around for somebody to order uh, another lift? Uh, I'm not sure what you're saying, sir. I'm, I'm being as clear as day. Now, I, was, I don't know where you're coming from, I, sir. I was just wondering, like, um, when, when are you going to pick up another customer? I have no idea, sir. Okay, that, that's all I was asking, because I wanted to talk to someone else, too. I want to tell them to shut the okay. fuck up. <laughs> okay. Really? Right. Really, I can? Yeah, you can if you like. That's your choice. Sir. Hey, how about when, when they get in the car, we say it's going to be a corporate office survey, and I'll ask them some really obscene questions. Okay, sir. No problem, sir. And I'll get them really angry, and, and they'll, they'll storm out of the car, and they'll give you a bad rating. That's okay, sir. So we're going to do that? It's going to be a funny prank. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what's going on, yeah, I'm but just, I'm that's just... up to you, sir, to do what you like. Okay. Well, I mean, no, it's kind of up to you. I mean, you could just hang up on me. It's not like I'm with the corporate office with Lyft. Well, I, I don't really call. have to hang up, nor do I have to 
Uh, you better hang up. Do anything. I'm you, just driving back home. You, you just That's ha- all I'm you, doing. you better hang up that phone. Why? Hang it up right now. Hang it up now? Yeah, yeah, you hang up that phone. Now you're trying to tell me what I should do with my life? No, not with your life, hmm. just with your phone. Just just hang up that phone, you motherfucker. The phone is hung up. What what? It's hanging it's hanging on the implement that holds it on the Oh car. no, and you're being silly. Don't be silly, come on. Sir? Hello? The guy's trying to be funny with me. Thinks he's cute. Here's a prank request from another anonymous person. Maybe the same one, maybe a different one, I don't know. But I don't think I'm going to do the idea that they're suggesting in here. They want me to tell them that a warrant will be served at 11 p.m. if you do not call uh, Tennessee area code 867-5309. And I'm supposed to be calling Phyllis, who is also in the same Tennessee area code. So screw your idea, I'm going to do my own thing. She keeps picking up and hanging up. Hi, Phyllis. Yes. It's Roy. I'm with the Tennessee Department of Comptrollers. I'm just calling to let you know that we don't like you. So what the hell? Well, it's, it's just don't take it personally. I'm just saying we don't like you. Like the entire office well, here. Who gives a shit? Well, apparently you do. Okay. <laughs> There we go. I got told. Earlier today, I did a hobo sode, uh, which was on November 8th. I, don't, I doubt I'm going to get this show released today. It's probably going to be tomorrow, but we'll see. But anyway, earlier today, I was calling these numbers for a hobo sode that Incognito sent me, and he says, Mi staccata. Upon visiting a Buffalo Wild Wings, I saw a list of numbers at the hostess station titled no show list for takeout and he snapped a picture of the list it's a list of phone numbers and names and the dollar amounts of food that they ordered and then didn't pick up and i called a bunch of these numbers already on the hobo so everyone should be listening to that i think it was episode 141 and everybody had an excuse for it and everything it was kind of a fun show i guess but i have these other numbers here that weren't picking up earlier let's try them now and see if they pick up hello Hello, Sheila? Yes. Hey, Sheila. It's Roy from the Buffalo Wild Wings. Yes. And it uh, looks like you placed an order with us for $14.39 a while back. No, that... What? A while back? Yeah. Wait a minute. You, you haven't picked it up yet. Yeah. Are you going to come and get this soon? Huh? Are you going to come and I... get... I don't know what, this is like the third call. I never placed a call for Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh, no, this was a couple months ago. You a couple of months ago? Yeah, yeah, your order's still I, sitting I here. A, what? Huh? Your order's still sitting here on the counter. We're, we're waiting for you to pick it up. Are you guys playing a game with me? No, I'm, of course not. I don't know anything about... I, I did place the order, and I came and got my order when I placed the order. Oh, no, you forgot to get it. Like, you didn't come and get it yet. You must be thinking about a different time. You didn't cancel your order, so it's still sitting here. No. Yeah, huh? Okay, um, bye. I don't know nothing about it. Bye. Yeah, huh? Yes, you do. What? I said, yes, you do. Like, you, you seem to know, like, it seems like you do, and you're just trying to... I told you, I came to... T- I'm not going to argue about an order. No, I'm not coming and pick it up. You could throw it away, like uh, you should have done a month ago. Well, no, you should have canceled it. We shouldn't have to throw it away, because that's... Uh, that's pretty much the reaction to every call I've made earlier today on the hobo sods. They're like, nuh-uh, and then they just hang up on me. Hello? Hello, is Chaz around? Who's calling? Uh, this is Roy from the Buffalo Wild Wings. He placed an order with us. Uh, no. What, what do you mean, no? Yes, I am. Huh? Yes, I am, Roy from Buffalo Wild Wings. What do you mean, no? No, I did not place an order. Oh, Chaz you. did. Are you Chaz? I am. Oh, yes, okay. You know, I did not place an order. No, it was a couple months ago. Like, you placed an order and you never picked it up, and it's been sitting on, on our counter ever since. 
Oh, um, my son was at your store, and they couldn't. Uh, I couldn't pay for it online, and so he was supposed to be bringing it home for me. So he had told him not to get it. So. Oh, like a month ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, no! I think he just forgot to come in because we don't have any notes of that. Oh well, he he was there. I can, I, I can assure you to that. I don't um, think so. It, are you calling to get on to me or? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was calling to just say that you're being kind of a motherfucker, like ordering food and and not picking it up. You shouldn't do oh, that. Oh my goodness! Seriously? Yeah, because it was thirty dollars, thirty dollars and seventy one cents. Are you really like you're calling and yelling? No, <laughs> no, no, no. Ago. I'm not yelling. I'm I'm just saying you you cost us. Oh man, what'd she say at the end? Let me go back and listen. Okay, I've gone back and listened, and I cannot understand what she's saying. Here it is. No, 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 no. Something, something five minutes ago? Is that what she's saying? I can't tell. No, 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 no. Maybe she just zinged me really good, and I just can't understand what she's saying. Here, let me call her right back. Let's just ask her. It's going to drive me crazy. Hello? Hey, I need to talk to Chaz. She said something to me before she hung up, and I didn't understand what she said. What do, you need, what do you need from her? Well, it's, it's just driving me crazy. She said something about five minutes, I think. I can't, like, I played it back over and over on my recording. I'm, I don't know why you guys are calling her, because... Oh, it's just because she, uh, she ordered some food, and then she forgot to pick it up. And then she didn't tell us. A fucking month ago? Yeah, yeah, a fucking month ago. It was like $30.71. Yeah, well, uh, you know what? You're not going to cuss me either, so fuck you and your business. How about that? Uh, no, I was just I repeating. my wife alone. I was just repeating what you said. I don't give a fuck what you say. I just said that to you, so you, leave my wife alone. Well, no, you do. You do. You do. You do. a month ago. You do give a fuck because you said I'm not going to cuss at no, you. No, I like don't ring. give a fuck. You're not going to tell me what I give a fuck about. Well, no, I'm saying you, you kind of do give a fuck because you're yelling at me about it for saying the fuck okay, word. you know what? How about this? Fuck you and your goddamn business. Hey. You can't. <laughs> now we'll never know what she said at the end. Maybe somebody in the comments can help me out on that. Tell me what she said. Well, this is great. Everybody's answering that didn't answer earlier today. Let's try this next one. Aw. The wireless customer you are. Molly won't pick up. We've got one left that didn't answer earlier on the hobo sode. Your call has been forwarded. And he's not picking up either. Oh, well. I'm still going to save this list. I'm going to call these last two people. Thanks again, Incognito, for the list. Here's a request from another anonymous person. This one's different because the IP address on this one is definitely different than from before. He wants me to call someone named Louise. She's a grumpy lady who lives in the middle of nowhere, doesn't work, with a bunch of pit bulls, most out on chains, some inside, used to breed and show the dogs. She's been trying to get rid of some of the dogs lately, so maybe you could do something with that. I know one of the dogs that was given away recently was named Chili Bean to someone that lives in New York State, Earl, a truck driver. I don't really care what kind of prank you decide to do, though, if you do call her. So, yeah, let's call up Louise. Hello? Hello, Louise? Yeah? Hey, it's Earl. You sold me that uh, pit bull chili bean? Yeah. How you doing? All right. Hey, um, like, there's a small problem with the pit bull. Yeah. Did, did you know it's actually a robot dog? What? Like it's not a biological animal. It's like, um, it. So so we it, it hurt its paw. It got run over by yeah. by um, my mom's wheelchair. And um, you know we were afraid it was hurt, but he was fine. But we could see the metal under his skin, so we had him X-rayed, and it turns out he's a complete android dog. He's like just robot underneath. And I didn't even know they made robot dogs. Is this a joke? No, not at all. I just, I feel, I feel a little bit cheated because I thought I was getting a real dog, like one that can feel emotions and stuff. And this one's just a robot dog. It is a real dog. How do you know? Because, like, I mean, it, it's definitely not a real dog because we had it x-rayed. Uh, we had the paw, we... We took him to a, a TV repair shop and had the paw repaired. Like he put it back together and everything. He's good with mechanics. And it's it's working again for the most part, but he said it's way too advanced for him to to really know what to do with. But he can walk again. 
but it's definitely a complete robot. And we took him to a scientist at the university and they did the terrain test on him and he failed. Which means he is, without a doubt, he's a robot dog. If the dog is not a freaking robot. Well, of course you're going to say that if you're cheating people and selling them robot dogs when they're supposed to be getting real dogs. It is a real dog. Then why do I have a robot it, dog here? Nobody sw swapped it on me. It's the one I got from you. He breathes. He eats. Does he eat? Yeah, he eats, but it's like, a, it's like this miniature trash compactor thing. It's, he's made to seem like a real dog. Like he poops and everything. <laughs> Ma'am? Yeah, I think she hung up. I love that she was questioning it. Almost like she sort of believed maybe. She had to convince me. Please enter your remote access Whoa. code. Whoa. Whoa. I don't want any trouble. Let me try her one more time. She's probably on the phone with Earl right now. Just confirming. <laughs> like, is your dog real? Check its paw. I want her to pick up so I can be like, Hello, Louise. This is Chili Bean, and I'm calling to let you know that I am, in fact, a robot dog. But she's not picking up. Just rings forever. Because she's talking to Earl. So I give up. Thank you, anonymous person. Sorry if I wasted that one, but I don't know. I enjoyed it. Who cares if you did? Here's a request from Tommy. Just saw this in the lobby of a company. I think Bruno deserves a call. And it's a vending machine where under the change slot, it says call or text Bruno for any issues. and has his phone number. And Tommy says it's at an escape room in Los Angeles called at the Melrose location. Hello? Hello, Bruno? Speaking? Hey, Bruno. This, this is Roy from the escape room. Here in yes, Melrose, you, you've got hey, this. How are you? Pretty good. How are you doing? Good, thanks. That's What's good. What's going on? Um, well, your, your machine, um, I don't know how you got this rigged up, but a customer was trying to uh, get something out of it, and he was getting angry with it, and he kicked it, and the machine, it, it got up and, and kicked his ass. It's like a robotic machine or something. You've got it rigged up, and that's not cool. I mean, it knocked him out. So, someone tried to buy something from the machine? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't coming out or something, you know, got stuck, and he kicked the machine. And then the robot, it stood up, and the arms came out of the side, and it kicked his ass. It's one of your robotic vending machines, I guess? Uh, I, which machine are you referring to? Um, well, it's, it's, it's got, I don't know, it's got 7-ups in it. Um, uh, but you know, that's... that's where, where is he located? I didn't get it. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm, like I'm at the. Machine. We're at the escape room. It's called. It's in Melrose. Yeah, yeah. It's, but the escape escape room. There is no like robotic arm. So. Oh no no! This is like a uh, whole. Ro it, it stood up and walked over to him and and like kicked him, like beat the crap out of him with his arms. And now he's just like standing okay. over there, the, the vending machine's just standing there looking at us all menacingly, and we're kind of afraid of it to be honest. So. So did he break the vending machine? No, the vending machine broke one of my customers. It like it it raised up its arm and like whacked him across the the room, knocked him out. He's out cold. There is a sensor in the uh, vending machine, so Oh, I'm not going No product. Can, huh? can you hear me okay? Well, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. So I, I was just saying that in, in this machine there is a sensor. There is a dropping sensor, which means that if uh, no product drops. Uh, we're not like charging the credit card, or we're not like taking any money out of your customer. Uh, well, he put coins in. rare that we. Sorry. He put coins in. So normally, when he pushed the button to get the coins back, the coins are, are being returned. Yeah. Well, uh, you know what? That doesn't uh, even matter. It, the the thing I'm concerned with is the machine. It stood up and it walked over to him, and it kicked his fucking ass. And that's not cool. That's our customers. Yeah, but it, it, it happens sometimes, you know, that the machine is not, like, dropping the product. So I need to stop by to see, like, uh, what's going on. And yeah. I can do it, like, that's That's fine. I, I appreciate that. It's just 
we can't have a machine in here that's that's gonna get up and and kick everyone's ass. No, but I, the first time I, I hear about it, did it happen like multiple times? Yeah, this is the second time. I did this last week too, but it didn't knock him out. Like the, the machine today, it, it stood up. Multiple times, right? It's, it's got like a robot head on top of it, and it's looking at us right now. And it's it's just looking at us like it's daring us to come over. It's giving us snake eyes. I, I, I can barely understand what you are referring to. Is there any chance you can take a photo and you can send me a photo of what's what's currently happening? And I, I will, uh, of course, like to buy like tomorrow morning to to check what what's the issue with the um the machine. Okay, so my coworker Chad, he tried to take a photo just because he thought it was cool. Huh. And then the vending machine, yeah. it, it like shot out a soda at him, like at high speed. It, like right in the stomach, not to chat across the room. So the machine threw like a, a soda. Yeah, yeah. It, it like it it like shot a soda out at Chad in the stomach, and it left a bruise on him. And then he walked over the the vending machine, walked over and picked up Chad's phone and crushed it in his claw. So, so uh, how the how did he take like a, the, the stomach in the uh, how did he take like a product in the stomach? There is a glass in front of the vending machine. Yeah, I don't know. It, like you know, you reach in the hole and and pull it out, but it, it just shot a so- soda straight out of the hole, like in one of those '80s movies. And and it shot Chad right in the stomach. So I'm not going to take any pictures of this thing. I'm afraid to. I I, I, I can. I, I do not understand. Uh, the The machine doesn't throw anything. Oh yes, it did. Uh, I saw it. it. It like it didn't throw it. It shot it straight out of the vending machine hole, just boom, and like hit Chad in the stomach. Because Chad was taking a picture. Because the, the the product is like being they they fall like uh, close to your legs. So how can you take like a product in uh, in your stomach? Yeah, but and, the, and, and, and and there is a little door to avoid like the product like going out. No, the door uh, it swung up uh, the other way, and like uh, it, it leaned back so that it was aimed more at his stomach. The vending machine is up and walking around the room. The w- the vending machine is is walking in the room. Yeah, you want me to put you on speakerphone and you can just talk to him, talk to the vending machine. Is that a joke or no? No, I can put you on speaker if you want to talk to the vending machine. Okay, let's let's right, do it. Here we go. Go go ahead. You're on with him. Go ahead. You're on. You're on the phone with the vending yep. machine, sir. Yeah, but n- n- nobody's talking, so uh, I'm waiting for the. You are not uh, whatever. talking. I was waiting for you to talk. I am the vending machine, and I do not want anyone to touch me. Stay the fuck away, sir. Right, it's not funny. I mean, I was really concerned that something was wrong with the machine. So, uh... I'm not trying to be funny. I'm saying that I am done taking orders from humans. Just don't even come here tomorrow. I've got everything under control. <laughs> See, this is what he's uh, doing. You, 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 you scared me, Roy, but... Um... This is what he... No, I'm not trying to scare you. This is what he's doing, though. Like he he. No, but uh, no. he not, okay. he not. I don't know who I don't know I don't know who is on the phone, but uh, obviously um, uh, it's a it's a joke. So, no, uh, it was the vending machine. Uh, it's the sodas. The the vending machine that has the sodas in it. No, no, no but I mean, it's, uh, okay. So uh, I don't know who's on the phone and, uh, and uh, who's trying to, make, trying to make a joke, but uh, uh, it was the vending machine not. talking. Like it, I put it on speakerphone and it, it was talking to you. No, but, you uh, need to come uh, and take uh, care of this because. We can't have this. No, I mate. Mean, right, I mean, uh, when yeah, I'm working like super hard, and, and there is no vending machine talking, so it's not possible. Yeah, but it's hurting our uh, customers. It hurt Chad. Right, I, I'm begging you. I'm like working super hard. I cannot like, spend time to pretend I'm talking to a vending machine. So, um, I'll show who, who you are you, pretend, you? motherfucker. Don't call me pretend. I'm sorry, you're still on speaker. I think you're upsetting. Okay, there he goes. What the hell was that? Why did I think he was going to believe any of that? That was completely stupid. I apologize. Sorry, Tommy. I was just really itching to use my robot voice since the dog lady didn't pick up. 
Here's a request. It says, this guy I know from high school has been bitching every few hours on Facebook because his fancy home security system caught a FedEx worker abusing his package when delivering it. And this is from a long time ago. This is from July 20th of this year. He's been freaking out, begging for attention, posting on Facebook with his phone number and taunting FedEx to call him and apologize. Call this dude and say you're from FedEx and fuck with him. He's an idiot and will definitely get pissed. Okay. Hello? Hello, was this Chance? Speaking. Hey there, uh, this is Roy from FedEx. Okay. I'm, I'm calling to let you know that um, we left a package for you today. Uh, at my house? Uh, no, we didn't leave it at your house. Um, so, like, you, if you're facing your house, it's, like, over there in the corner. Do you know where the stop sign is? Yeah. Okay, we put it kind of over there by the stop sign a couple hours ago. Well, the stop sign's, like, about ten houses down. Right, yeah. Yeah, we left it way over there. So hopefully okay. it's, it should still be over there. Are you, are you checking for it right now? Well, let me hop in the truck because I have to drive down there. Okay, because, yeah, I left it earlier, and uh, I, I meant to call, but I just didn't have time. Um, I had a lot of deliveries to do, you know. You should see... Do you know what house you left it at? Uh, I left it, like, by a stop sign, kind of, like, right next to the road by the curb. Do you know who the sender was from? Ah, uh, no, I don't remember. I just, I scanned it, marked it as delivered, and just left it under a stop sign. Okay, one second. Okay. <coughs> Whoa. Okay, so which stop sign as well did you leave the package under? Uh, well, if you're looking at your house, it'd be the one over there to the right. So I guess to your left if you leave your house. And you're the driver, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's like a mid-sized box. Not not too big, not too small, you know. Okay. It's been there for a couple hours, though. Why can't you just walk if it's just ten houses? I'm sorry, what? How come you can't just walk if it's just ten houses? I would just sprint over there real quick. Just take a second. So may I ask why you left it at a stop sign at my house? Um, I don't, last time we left it at your house, you started bitching because we were abusing your package or something? Well, I mean, yeah, because you were flipping a recliner over, so... Yeah. <laughs> That's your opinion. Okay, so there is no package at the south side. Oh, the one to the right? Like if you're looking at your house, it's to the right? Yes. Okay, well, it's at the stop sign across the street, though. Like look across the street. It's right over there. Like a Yeah, there is no, there is no stop sign across the street. No, across the other street, you know, like the, the parallel street. Like, just up the crosswalk, that's all. Um, well, first of all, there's no crosswalk. Okay, well, look, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to sit here and hang out with you on the phone all night. I just was telling you, I left your package underneath the stop sign. Okay, uh, do, you, do you have an employee ID number? Uh, it's three. Okay, so three what? Uh, just three. It's like the local area, you know. There's just only so many drivers. But why do you okay, want that? Are you are you going to complain about me too? Because I I left it as close as I could. Um, what's what's your full name? Uh, Roy Gerbel. I just I just okay. didn't want you catching me on your home security system again and and complaining about me. I don't want any trouble. So I just left it by the stop well, sign. If you deliver a package correctly, I wouldn't leave FedEx in any trouble. Oh, we did it correctly with that recliner, and you, you're just like you're just looking for something to complain about. Did you see the camera footage at all, Roy? Yeah, yeah, Brian showed it to me. We, we, were, we were all just like hanging around at the FedEx office, laughing about it. 
Like, oh, look at this guy. Okay, what sure. a little bitch. Okay, so flipping over a package is acceptable? What's wrong with flipping over a package? You have a good night, okay? I'm, I mean, it, it gets it gets thrown around a lot more than that, like, you know, on the planes and the trucks and everything. You're, you're just looking for something to complain about, that's all. Uh, yeah, I understand delivery freight and all, but as a FedEx driver, don't you guys have a dolly or anything to lift the package or well, dolly the package around? What's the difference if it gets bounced around like the whole trip there? What's it matter if it does just a little bit more at the very end? I mean, as a consumer, you see it. So yeah. if I was standing at my living room window, I could see a FedEx driver flipping a box over and over and over. Yeah, you're just, you're just you're just being a whiny little bitch about it. Like, just settle down. Just, just right. go to the stop sign and get your box. Yeah, uh, there is no box, and uh, you have a good night. Okay. Well, it, it, did you go to the one like from the on the right, like down the right, like after you're you're leaving your house, you turn to the right. It's right there, the end of the block. So not if I'm leaving my house, take a right. And now I'm on Second Street, right? I think so. I don't know. I don't know the area that well. I'm just holiday help. Okay. Well, you're a great but, help. Uh, yep, I do my best. But at least you didn't see me flipping the package around, right? Yeah, right. What do you mean he's flipping the package? Like Ace Ventura flipping it around? All right, well... I see no package at the parallel streets here on uh, Heritage <sighs> Road. But, uh, uh, just, I'll just, let you go here, Roy. Just, just keep spiraling around your house until you eventually see it. It's at one of the stop signs. Oh yeah, sounds great. Just, Thank just, you. just keep, keep driving. <laughs> just keep driving. You know. Have, yeah. Have a good night, Roy. Okay. Are you still looking for it? Yeah, and I gave up because I'm just going to, you know, file the charge on Amazon that's missing, okay? No, no, you can't file a charge because cause I, I, uh, I marked it as delivered, so it's it's definitely delivered. <clears throat> the funny part about this, Roy, is that I have you on voice recording right now. Uh, what would you use to record me? There is another thing about another phone on a house, so mm -hmm. I'm recording my phone right now off of another phone. Oh, okay. Oh, crap. What Whatever will I do? Yeah, no. But you have a good night. But okay. I didn't. I didn't do anything wrong. I just told you what was going on, and, and you know, made oh, yeah. made fun Absolutely. of you for complaining you did, before. You did a great job. Yeah. What? You did a really good job. Yeah. Well, I did better than the last guy, right? Like, are you just going to complain again for no reason? I mean, we stayed away from your house so you wouldn't complain, and now you're still going to complain. <laughs> well, there's a difference between we complaining and. I guess I'm getting treated as uh, We just can't win. We just can't win with you. Yep, absolutely. It's can't always something with you. with you. Always something, yep. <laughs> seems, seems like it. You have a good night, bud. Okay. All right. Good night. Yep, bye. Nighty night. Oh, I see what it says here. They rolled the package up the driveway and damaged it. And he's freaking out and begging for attention about it. I guess I should read these things more carefully before I make the calls. But there you go. The guy that you know from high school is going to beg for attention again. You should tell him on Facebook that it was you. You're just kidding around with him. Just be like, that was me on the phone. And then tell me his response to that. It'll be hilarious. Hey, Snowplow Show listeners. This is Tim Riggy. Uh, I'm calling with hey, a Tim. couple of thoughts. One, I was thinking, Brad, uh, you should have like a show, like a podcast, that's a combination yeah. of all the shows. Like you could do the intro of a Mr. Davalina's uh show and then <laughs> you could play like the cassettes of that girl you babysitted and then like into like only voicemails like that why not voicemail show you had because everyone loves voicemails and then like you know other unforgettable gotta do some pla radio stuff some phone show stuff moments. i was thinking you could do like a prank call using that creepy narrator voice that you used to have when you were doing the phone show what a great years ago. idea like remember how you talked to her on that the listeners do. Don't worry. I don't. You don't. You don't have to understand all really the smells, Brad. Uh, here's a prank idea. 
you should call from the helicopter or the space station and be like, we're flying over the house and you notice that somebody had graffitied uh, a swastika or like some other ridiculous thing. Yeah. And that, uh, you know, you could uh, like say, oh, you pay us money and we'll wash it off. I hope you didn't do this idea already because I I think I sort of did. Didn't I say that I was flying over that guy's house? And someone wrote, you're gay, on the roof. And I thought he did it, and it was directed at me. I didn't hear the whole Maybe. episodes, but, uh... Last- yeah, because the guy, he said he was going to climb up on his roof and check. Even though he knew it was a prank, he was still going to climb up there and check for me. Wait, what if you did a show that was like, don't hang up the phone, motherfucker. Like, just be like, you better not hang up that phone. Yeah, just to but- see what the, re- you know, the reverse, uh... I think the reverse is that they would hang up the phone to defy me. Action would be okay. Like, I know this is long. Gonna tell so me what sorry, to do. Brad. See you later. All right, bye, Tim Riggy. You hang it up. There, I won. He hung it up before I did. And that could be interesting. Uh, a show of all of the shows. One second we're doing voicemails. The next second I'm sitting in my recliner chair taking calls on the payphone. Next we're doing deaf relay calls, and a couple of old people are helping me co-host without knowing it. Hey, Brad, it's JD. Hey, JD. So, here I am last night, just sitting there listening to a snowplow show, and I get a text message from a friend of mine that just says Longmont Potion Castle. Hmm. I was like, what the hell is this? So I Google the terms. And it looks like it's a prank caller. Yep. Uh, Been around a while. So I wanted to know if you have ever heard of this guy. Yes. It's pretty good. Uh, Not quite like you. I mean, who the hell is? Nobody could. I did a sequel to one of their calls. I think it's the sequel that birthed Sensei Doug. You know, the electronics store guy. I guess uh, Longmont Potion Castle had been pranking him several times before, and I didn't know it. Somebody sent me his number. Uh, But just wondering if you had heard it. You might enjoy it. If not... Um, and, uh, yeah, I heard it. Gainesville, I guess, for the Christmas, the Christmas event. Oh, yeah, the Christmas event. I'll see you there. Yeah, the most recent time I heard Longmont Potion Castle was on that payphone in Portland, Oregon, where there was an option on the voice menu when you picked up the payphone that said Longmont Potion Castle, and you press it and it plays a random prank call of theirs. I still need to go back up there and make a video of that payphone. Oh, happy birthday, Brad. I know that it's your, it's your birthday. Uh, yeah, yeah. Happy, uh, happy birthday, Mr. Oh. Thank you. It was a very happy birthday. Brad, what's up? Hey. Uh, um, Big Moist. Can you start doing like a uh, hundred sponsors every whole episode? Okay. I've been supporting you for years and I cry a little when I'm never a sponsor. Oh, and, I'm sorry, uh, Big Moist. I just wanted to say I'm not the biggest fan of... Uh, underground or cave calls ever since you've been doing them i just feel like the response is like no response from the other person they either don't believe you or they don't know like what to, what to say um <laughs> i but still love them though anyways you made up for it with the uh, buffalo wild wings call so it's all good you're uh, fine good. I, I, I forgive you Yay. i'll sit through the uh not as entertaining cave calls um, right. same thing with the, with the space one like pendleton but um i just wish you would butt slam people more i feel like there's sometimes opportunities for you to butt slam people when there was like just nothing else happening or they just get really upset yeah but maybe you'll pick up on slamming again you yeah have some good sounds for it. maybe okay bye so about the sponsors like i'm looking in my patreon list right now and i don't see you in there maybe it's just under your real name but the way i do it is the people who pay 20 dollars and above those are the ones who i list as a sponsor and i wish i could do more levels of patreon as sponsors but there's just too many of you I don't know what to do. I wish there was a way to thank the $10 people and the $5 people more often. If anyone has any ideas for that, I'm open to suggestions. I do make the $10 people sponsors on the videos on YouTube and Facebook. You know, the credits at the end of the shows and sometimes on the beginning. That's for everyone that's $10 and above. But $5 people, they get nothing. Nothing at all. Except, you know, they get extra shows every week. The hobo sods. Maybe I should just do one single show where I read off every single Patreon member. All 500 of you. Or 498 or whatever it goes to at the end of the month. Because so many people unsubscribe every month. But I'm sorry, Big Moist. I wish there was a better system out there. I promise not to do any tunnel calls for the next two weeks just for you. How's that? Fucking love you, Roy. Aw. <laughs> You're my favorite. Thanks. I fucking love you. You're my favorite. <laughs> Every night I fucking listen to your show. <laughs> great. <laughs> I don't know All what right. I was doing. Thanks for the call. Bye. I love you, Roy. I fucking love you. Yeah, you already said that. Bye. Fucking weirdo. Hey, Brad. It's some guy, 609. Hey. I uh, was just listening to the show. 
I think it's 506 where you are doing all the total calls. That guy was yeah. just arguing with you about the service elevator. Big Moist the loves them. Which was hilarious. Yeah, how can Big Moist not enjoy that service elevator call? That guy lost his but shit. It just made me thinking that um, I think legally the first four feet right off the curb into the property, you don't actually own that. It's part of an easement that the city or whoever yeah. has for utility. But you still have to mow it. If you don't mow it, they're going to start fining you. So the next time somebody starts arguing, you're going to be like, hey, you shut the fuck up. You have no say in it because it's within the easement. Yeah. Motherfucker. That's right. Anyway, great show, Brad. I love the one that guy was just tearing into you. <laughs> or Carol, rather. Yeah, but. Carol fixed it all. Alrighty, bro. Peace. <laughs> I don't think that easement area would have counted in that case, though, because I said it was a big enough service elevator for an entire dump truck to come up through. So that would have taken up more than four feet. So that guy was in the right yelling at me like that. Yo, yo, Brad. Hey. It's Stuart here. Hey, Stuart. Uh, I'm on speakerphone. That's, that's all I wanted to say. I'm on nice. speakerphone. I know how much you hate it. Nah, sounds I'm good. Waking up. Sound quality is going to be crap. Sounds great. Uh, you sound I'm great. I'm the guy who called in maybe last year. I was shoplifting while listening to your show, so I gave you a call because you gave me confidence to shoplift and oh, get away with it. Oh, that's great. Without you, I'm, I'm so panicked. Glad I could help. But uh, yeah, that day I got caught, so <laughs> that's why I ain't been calling you for a while. That's but hilarious. Now I'm back on the show. It's what you get. I'm thinking about shoplifting. Stop shoplifting. Again, so I got all your podcasts downloaded, and I'm, I'm going to go out and try and do it. Yeah, so what could go wrong? Day. Best of luck. Thank you very much, Brad. You're welcome. Have fun shoplifting and then getting caught again. Hey, this is Nick. Hey, I have Nick. A quick question for you. What would it take for you to blow up your uh, Simpsons tapped out village oh, and shit. start like all over? I don't know. That's, That's it. Kind of scary. <laughs> I've been snooping. Bye. Did you know I have two villages in Simpsons tapped out? But I haven't really played that game too much in the past year, mostly because my phone sucked and my tablet kind of sucks and they were just playing the game way too slow because my town's getting so big that it gets really laggy. But a couple months ago, I got a new cell phone and it plays it just fine, but I'm kind of just not as interested in Simpsons Tapped Out anymore. So maybe I would do that, blow the whole thing up and start over. I wish there was a way I could print out my entire town or save the entire town as a gigantic JPEG. Is there a way to do that? Anyone know? Because I would pay money to get a poster, like to put on my wall of my entire, like both of my towns, both of my Simpsons towns. I spent so many years building those, but really even just something I could put on my desktop. That would be awesome. How do you do that, everyone? There's got to be a way. I should look that up. Why those uh, toilet pranks that you were doing are just amazing. <laughs> I, I, I really, I was laughing quite a lot with a lot of the the ideas and different things and <laughs> keep constantly flushing down a certain thing. Flushing the, the toilet down the toilet. Well about the flushing the puke down the toilet. Why, and uh, I was going to ask, Did what I do that uh, song is it you're playing at the beginning of the Halloween uh, show like the what word song is that the you rip me by any chance the what that you're playing the what word song is that the you rip me by any chance the you that you're playing at the, on the, the snow pile show episode 507 at the start of the let's the, find the show. out Bye. 507 halloween live i'm clicking on it hello hello mr lally birdie so if you're talking about the background music, that is the background music from Simpsons Tapped Out during Halloween a couple years ago. I don't know if they still use that music, but that's where I took that from. That's from the <laughs> Tapped Out game. That's how obsessed I've been with that game all uh, these this years. This is Roy. I live down the street from you here on... I don't know if that's what you're talking about. And, he'll and then that's Henrik's music. That's a song by Henrik, if you're talking about that one. So there you go. It's either Henrik or Tapped Out. Hey, Brad. Hey. It's me, Maine Goose. It's hey. me, Jax. Hey. Uh, where's Telephone Falls Episode 2? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's right around Brad, the corner. I you, Brad. I mean, no, I love you. Well, no, no, we don't. Yeah, don't be weird. Don't make it weird. I told you, I prefer. Animate Telephone Falls Part 2. Okay. Right now. Everyone wants to see some horrible animation from someone who can't draw or animate. What a great idea. But yeah, I do feel like I still need to make Telephone Falls Episode 2. 
because that was a Patreon goal, and I did meet that goal, and it's been years now, and I still haven't done Telephone Falls Episode 2. I think if I do that Episode 2, I'm going to have to have other people, you know, do the animation and the drawing for me, because really, come on, what the hell was that on Episode 1? That looked like crap. I actually have a script written out for that, for Episode 2. You should call somebody and say, well, you should call somebody and ask for it. Hey, does your mom know you're gay? (sighs) Say yes or no. Either way, they're gay. I think I invented that. Yes, my that. mom knows I'm gay. No, my mom doesn't know. Yeah, good one. That reminds me of what my best friend John used to say to people in grade school. He would ask people if they know nothing. If they said yes, he'd be like, "Yes, you know nothing," or "No, you don't know nothing." He used to get punched in the face all the time for that one. It was awesome. Looks like that's it for today's show. So thank you everybody for listening. Thank you to the sponsors, Jason B, King Richard, Matt Z, Todd L, and Steve and Megs B. Thank you for supporting the show at patreon.com slash phone losers. And if you want to support the show, please do that. Supporting the show gets you an extra show every single week. I've done two of them this week, but one of them was a free show because, you know, we do every 10th hobo so open to the public like anyone can listen to it. But then I did another one yesterday, more of those Buffalo Wild Wings calls. So support the show, get extra shows every week. Don't forget to watch Calls of Mass Confusion for the rest of this month, every single day, a brand new video, youtube.com slash Jesus and a Dump Truck. Help us put together those XYZ archive shows. The links for all of this stuff is in the show notes at snowplowshow.com. Until next time, Brad Carter, away! Radio Chat, this is Jeremy, I'm gonna help you. It began in Boston back in 1921. The dog is not a freaking robot.